Hey, Kyle. Hey, welcome, Coach. Hey. We're going to get started with questions from Jared Lloyd and Jason Shepard. Hey, Coach. Got to first ask. Got to first ask about the reaction to the news today that the fans aren't going to be allowed to be at the game. Just you guys, I guess, knew this was probably a possibility. But what's that been like to to talk about with the guys uh, about uh, the change there? Yeah, it's always hard. You like to have a full stadium, but uh, it's just our reality that we live in, so we're gonna have to deal with it. Also, is there a, a, a sense that with the guys that you know, with Provo and, and Orem going to this orange phase, that they need to be even more careful? And and uh, you know, you guys have already tried to ram that into into their heads, I guess. But has that been a wake up call? No, not really. We've been we've been taking the proper precautions, trying to do our best to. Take care. I mean, obviously, the boys want to play, and uh, you know, anything that changes out out in the public obviously affects us a little bit. But we've always got to got to try to take care of ourselves. Coach, what is the uh, the biggest um, issue or um, the thing you've got to deal with the most when you face an offense like this that wants to move as quickly as they do from snap to snap? What adjustments do you have to make with that? Just being ready to play, you know, cleats in the ground. If we're, if we're stuck, you know, trying to make adjustments uh, while they're getting ready to snap the ball. If, you're, if we're stuck trying to get calls in while they're snapping the ball, then, then uh, you know, it's, it's just bad coaching on our, on our side if that happens. And so we've just got to make sure that our boys have their cleats in the ground, they're ready to play. And that's, uh, that's been the emphasis this week. Does it change anything in terms of – substitutions do you, do you maybe not do as many substitutions or does it play into any of that type of thinking as well yeah for sure too when you play teams like this you've got to you've got to make sure that uh you know I, i'm sure you guys saw middle tennessee they they ended up getting caught in a substitution and they got a pick six and so uh there are certain times that you've got to sub and so our boys have got to be ready to play you know longer snaps we normally look to substitute d linemen uh because d linemen substitute the most uh you know, somewhere between uh, five, six, seven plays. And, and uh, with these type of teams, we're really looking for the first opportunity, and that's deep, inc incomplete passes, um, tackles by our sidelines, tackles by their sideline, and when they sub. And so in, within those parameters, we'll try to sub and keep our guys fresh, but our guys have to be ready to play, um, you know, 10, 12, 13 snaps, depending on how, how long they go. And if we don't have those opportunities, we just got to be ready to, to uh, get our cleats in the ground and be ready to play ball. Let's go Sean, Jay, then Brandon. Uh, yeah, Coach, speaking of being ready to play, you guys are obviously lining up against an unknown team and mostly an unknown offense, but the guy leading that offense, Ryan Pugh, is pretty well known to you guys. What, what do you remember about um, Coach Pugh, and does he seem a little bit different at all in the last couple of years now that he's a full-time OC and just kind of what you've been able to see on film and that sort of stuff? Uh, you know, I, he, there's a uh, coach Pew. I've always enjoyed being around him when he was here, um, you know, stand, stand in contact with him and limited contact with him, especially in game week and, um, have the utmost respect for him and know that he's going to have those boys ready. And, and, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're coming in right now off, off of a, off of a big win and having a little bit more uh, attention nationally. And so, we're, uh, you know, to them, it's it's a big game, obviously, and we've got to make sure that our boys are ready. But I know that he's a coach that will have his boys ready for the challenge, and we've got to be ready as well because we know that these guys will play hard. Hey, Coach, 6,000 fans can still make a, quite a bit of noise. Does it take away from your home field advantage by not having a crowd, particularly on defense? Uh, for sure. You know, for sure. We'd love to have – any amount of people there, even if it's just families, I you know the players for sure. That's probably one of the things that's that's hurting them the most. Is a lot of them had families that were planning on coming, but I mean, any fans that you have that are making noise, it it uh, contributes, uh, you know, to the momentum and the way the things go. And so it's definitely gonna gonna affect that aspect. But uh, you know, as we go in and prepping the boys, you know, they're not gonna have fans. We're not gonna have fans. It's gonna be really same thing as Navy. We just got to make sure that we are we have our guys on the sideline geeked up, ready to to cheer on our teammates and if they're, they're guys that don't take any snaps that they're bringing something to the table as far as value whether it's bringing juice or energy and and just being there as uh, as part of the cheering squad 
Coach, along with all the restrictions brought about by COVID-19 has, has been recruiting restrictions and the, specifically the dead period being uh, extended till the end of the year. Can you speak to maybe what challenges that presents for you guys as a coaching staff and maybe challenges that are unique to BYU in that regard? Yeah, not, not being able to go out and see kids in person has been, has been a challenge. I mean, you're, you're really having to make uh, decisions um, in recruiting based off of film, and that's, that's all is hard. You normally, you normally look at film um, and kind of formulate some of your ideas as far as putting board together, and then, and then you go out and you try to see those guys in, in person and, and either confirm or come back and say, you know what, this kid, kid isn't what I thought he was on film. And so not being able to see somebody in person, I think, takes away our ability to, to evaluate that way. But also just not not uh, not being able to bring them on campus, I think, is a big deal too. I mean, you're you're uh, you know you're offering kids and you're you're committing kids and you're bringing kids and hopefully that there's a relationship before that. But I mean, there's there's kids that are basically going to sign on the dotted line without without uh, meeting you in person. You know, that's a that's a little awkward. But uh, you know, with with the challenges that come with it, we're we're hoping that we can still put together a, a good contributing class. Um, and, uh, you know, keep things moving the way that they, that they need to be. Let's go Jake, Jared, and Mitch. Lisa, in terms of switching over from defending an option team to now facing a spread team, did you guys do stuff during training camp to get yourself up to speed on this, or has it been a wholesale change in terms of getting your defense ready? We when we were getting ready for the for the option team, I mean, a big big majority of our focus was on that. But we wanted to to try to get uh, you know segments of practice where we still got a lot of crossover with our offense, so we can play uh, uh, traditional traditional defense. And so the coverage piece of it is really the big challenge when we go into a Navy game. The, the coverages are completely different and a little bit more aggressive, and so. Um, you know, that, that has been the focus as we got ready for Navy was getting a little bit of, of uh, teaching going on with, uh, with just traditional football. And then as we, as we pass Navy and get ready for this game, we were able to, you know, just keep some kind of semblance of playing some regular football in order for us to, to prepare and not be too, too far behind. Coachy, just you're more experienced on defense maybe the, this year than you have been. Does that allow you to be more aggressive as far as, you know, getting disruption and trying to disrupt what the other team wants to do in the backfield? Um, you know, I think, uh, I think I, you know, we've, we've, I've been asked this question a bunch just through the years as far as just aggression, all that. And I, you know, I see the game differently as far as what aggression is. Like, uh, you know, most, most people are talking about, uh, havoc and you know sacks and all this stuff and I think I think it's all relative you know when you're we we went in at a certain certain time of the year I mean with our linebackers leading the country in interceptions you know and so to me it's uh what what are you willing to give up and what are you willing not to give up and so you face certain teams like this who you look at a team that passes the ball majority of the time um, you know they they run the ball but they're more committed to to the pass then uh, they don't hold on to the ball very long, you know. There's there, there are certain things that you look at, like uh, do I wanna do I wanna bring four or five guys if majority of the time they're not gonna get home, and or do I wanna just maybe send two or three and send more, you know, dedicate more guys to coverage. I think it's a, there's a back and forth there. There's a time to speed things up as far as what the quarterback sees. There's a time to basically have the quarterback hold the ball and just try to scramble, which is sometimes when you're facing teams like this, you get frustrated when you're trying to blitz or send more than four guys and the, and the ball's just out and those guys aren't able to get to the quarterback. And these, these, these guys know what they're doing. They're smart, they're really good ball coaches, and they have a, a system that they run. And so the back and forth for us is going to be us trying to find them in situations where we think they're going to hold on to the ball and them to try to get us into situations where they think we're going to blitz, where they can get rid of the ball. And so, you know, some of the studies that you look into with teams like this, and we, we looked at this team specifically and, uh, you know, coverage wise, they are higher percentage, percentage completion as well as just big plays versus the blitz. And they struggle a little bit more with, with more, more coverage teams. And so we, you know, one of the things that we want to do is challenge our D-line to, to uh, when, when we do decide that we're going to commit to a two-man rush or a three-man rush to work 
hard for you know five six seconds to get there and hopefully we can we can get the quarterback uh scrambled throwing you know throwing off balance you know tip balls incompletes as well as some interceptions and then uh when when we ask them to speed things up and and try to get some sacks in certain situations that that obviously we come away with those and so um you know uh, what uh, in answer to your question as you asked yeah you know experience always helps but i think it's it's really uh, that that question is almost relative to what the other other team is doing. You know what I mean? Lisa, I know that personnel status is kind of a day by day thing with COVID nineteen and and contact tracing. But three guys in particular that were absent from the Navy game just kind of want to maybe get a check in on their staff. If, if you expect them to maybe be available and dress this week, Atu Naisa Mahe, Chris Wilcox, D'Angelo Mandel. Are those guys, as of today, are you expecting them to be available to play this Saturday? Yeah, you know, I think most of the injury stuff is just going to have to go through Kalani. Um, it's it's a change in every day with this whole COVID thing, and and uh, he, he'd be the proper guy to answer any of those questions. Okay, and, and then uh, and one more question for me. Do you just feel like that Navy game, I know it's a long time ago already, but was that the best defensive performance one of your – defenses has, has had since you've been here at BYU dating back to 2016? Um, we're, we're certainly excited about it for sure. You know, um, I didn't fully appreciate it until I watched the, watched the film on, on the, the plane when I went back and watched, you know, cause you're, you're watching during the game. It's, you know, it's just, it's kind of going and things are going the way that you plan. And, but uh, you turn, you cl- turn on the film, look a little bit more closely and you see, the physicality of what what was uh, what was displayed on the field, and you have a, a you know deeper appreciation for what the players did and went through, and um, you know it goes it goes goes a long way. It's when your offense is scoring like that too, you know the defense gets geeked up a little bit more, and it almost seems like psychologically there's more of a reason to sacrifice your body in the way that a lot of these kids did because it was really really physical game on film. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I think you guys would, you guys can, can uh, pick <laughs> what, which performance is best and which, you know, all that stuff. We're just trying to do our best, keeping, keeping points off the, off the scoreboard and, and do well, but, uh, certainly excited about the way that our kids play that game. Thanks. All right, we're going to go with our last two questions, Jake and Jared. Lisa, we've talked uh, with the coaches down there at Troy. Uh, Chip Lindsay says he's got familiarity with guys like Jeff Grimes, obviously having a guy like Ryan Pugh on his staff. Do you have familiarity with playing against him, coaching against him, or at just any level in terms of your relationship? You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't looked deep into just the, that, that tree and where he comes from. So, uh, no, I just I mean, we're, we're familiar with the schemes and kind of – um, you know, it looks a lot like like air raid and has a lot of the same principles, but we haven't. I, not that I can pinpoint anybody specifically that I've been on the staff with or anything. Last thing, coach, I just wanted to ask about Pepe's contribution, what what he's brought to this team. We're going to talk to him, and he's obviously stepped it up big in that first game. So, just wanted to get your thoughts about his contribution to this team this year. Big, big, big contribution. I mean, not just physically on the field, but emotionally, just a, a great locker room guy, a uh, great spiritual leader. I mean, the boys, boys rally around him. And, and uh, one of the leaders that doesn't really say much, you know, he's, uh, he's kind of a guy that just leads by action. But I think um, sometimes you have too many guys that are raw, raw, loud guys. Just, all of a sudden you have 50 guys that want to lead that just aren't really backing up with action. Pepe has been quietly – just pushing along, trekking along, and backing it up with what he's done on the field as well as off the field. And I think that the players respect that. And uh, he, he certainly has been been a great addition to our team, and we're pumped up to have him. Okay, that's it. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you.